Hello, hello. So today I'm going to take you through a new tool called Create. Uh, you can find it at create.xyz. But the reason why I'm sharing this tool is because I think they're definitely onto something or they're headed in the right direction. So in the AI tooling space, you might be familiar with tools like Cursor, uh, Replit, ChatGPT, Claude, etc. Right? And Create is kind of combining a few other tools into one. It's kind of doing what you're currently seeing with Cursor, Replit, Claude, um, weaving in a bit of Webflow and even Framer. So this is what it looks like on the inside of the, uh, the, the tool. And if you're familiar with Vercel even, um, then you will be familiar with this type of interface where there essentially is you know, the chat on the side and then you've got your, your visuals on the right. So I am actually just going to do the ROI calculator. So you can see here, uh, it had a prompt which I clicked on and then it put in what is expected. All right, so for this one, let's just go ahead and hit enter. So essentially, whatever idea that you have, if you're familiar with using ChatGPT, Claude, uh, or Vercel, you put in your idea and you'll see what pops out on the right, okay? But, uh, you know, this part is not unique because a lot of tools are doing this, but I do want to show what is unique about all this and how this will start to flow in the future. So you can see that we've got an ROI calculator here, right? So if I go into demo mode, full screen, you can start to see here, right, that you can actually play around with it, okay? Da, 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 et cetera, et cetera. And so now what I want to do is I actually want to make it so that when I enter information in here, um, it can actually provide me uh, some other options on a different page. So I'm going to hit create new page. Okay. Um, now create a visual um, dashboard <clears throat> using, and then what we need to do is actually go to this results ROI calculator um, using the uh, data captured on ROI calculator page. Okay, so we've got that, and I'm gonna hit enter. Okay, so you notice how quickly it did that, right? And what I want to do now is actually add some charts. So in other tools like Cursor or Vercel, um, you might need to install dependencies. But for Create, a lot of that is kind of embedded. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, um, let's add some visuals using charts. All right, so now it's... You, you, you might have noticed that I did a, uh, a forward slash and put in charts. And I'll share with you what that is actually doing shortly. So you notice how it in, included the charts, right? So under add-ons, when I'm actually hitting forward slash, it's bringing up the same thing that you see with the add-ons, okay? So what you can do is that you can actually use certain aspects that are already embedded into Create that you might have to Hmm, do in a, a much more long-winded way uh, through alternative tools uh, currently, right? Uh, so, for example, if I wanted this application to speak with ChatGPT, you know, I would just say forward slash ChatGPT and it would start doing that. And I'll give an example of where this starts to become useful. So, um, okay, so this is a ROI dashboard. Okay, now I want to say, now add a section um, on the page that allows the user to chat with its data via, um, let's say, ChatGPT. Uh, okay. It should look like a messenger window, perhaps, um, perhaps as a chat button that can pop up at the lower right. Let's see how this goes, okay?
All right. And so, of course, it's building. It's going to recreate the uh, visuals. Building, building, building. And, oh, of course, if you want to see the code, you can see it right here. Okay? As it's building everything up. And I think what I like about Crit is that you can actually edit the code directly um, inside the app. Right? So if you do want to edit the code, you can go in and edit straight here. Um, whereas in you know other applications like Vercel, you have to take it out of Vercel, put it into something like Cursor before you can start even editing uh, the the code. Okay, so you can see, I do like it. There's a chat right in the lower. Okay, um, so key metrics: 100k, 75%. Um, what is the average? What's the growth rate? Us currently. Let's see how it works. Okay, so I'm going to be able to provide real time data. However, the average monthly growth. Really so, okay, cool. So, this, you know, since it's obviously saying un I'm unable to provide real time data, I would just put in a more instructions in the in the lower left, um, still using ChatGPT to add that functionality. Okay, and this is where it gets interesting um, in Create. So if I want to start, you know, working with some functions, I can actually create that separately and also visually. Okay. So if you look here, this is a new function. Uh, create a uh, new function that allows uh, that takes in users' input, <clears throat> then determines. Um, Okay, let's let's say then makes future predictions based off of the user's data. Uh, sample data from monthly uh, income expenses. That makes future predictions. Use ChatGPT if necessary to make those calculations or provide contextual. Uh, recommendations okay so watch when I do this what's happening okay so you can see here visually I've got the functions all right and I can then go in and test this okay so got the new function what we want to do is we go here run function Saying pending, you can view details if you want. Running now. So at, at the moment, so you notice how under output it said no because it's obviously still running. But now it's got the output and it's all in JSON format. If you're not familiar with JSON, essentially if you're working with any of these AI systems, um, JSON just allows you to have more control over the formatting, okay? And this is what you will typically find. So we've got that there. And then with the, the JSON, right? Okay, I'm gonna create a new page. Financial predictor. All right, now create an interface that allows the user to input uh, financial data and uses Right, because we just created that function. So if you go to functions, financial predictor, um, to output uh, results, then I'm going to say uh, use doo -doo -doo. oh, it might not even need to use actually. So you'll notice here when I scroll down, there's a whole bunch of uh, components that you can use. Okay, I'm going to have a look to see. All right, markdown render. Okay, uh, to clearly uh, display the outputs. All right. Now, as I'm creating new pages, this is the part that sets itself, that sets create apart from the other tools that are currently out. It allows me to essentially create new components and have them interact with each other visually and easily. And I think this is what we need to get to with these other tools, you know, 
like Vercel or uh, Replit, etc. Because it works well if you are a developer, but I think for many who aren't developers, you want to have something that it is more visual, is more text-based, but does allow you to actually stitch things together so that you can create an app um, straight within a tool like this. Okay, so demo, let's have a look. Revenue, one, uh, 50,000, market trends, um, AI on the rise. Okay, so it's gonna predict. Now, I'd probably add like a progress loader just so I can see how much time I have left before I get results. Um, you can see it's taking a, a while, but you can see here now we got the prediction results, okay? Now, if I hadn't used uh, that, the markdown renderer, this would have come out just with the JSON output. And if you're building an app or a, a customer facing thing, then you don't want it to look that way, right? You want it to look as clean as possible. Okay, so we now have this. And what we might want to do is maybe even change up the styling. So you can go to style guide and you can see here, there's a few different options. So let's take a look at what we can use. Uh, maybe let's go with midnight, save changes. All right. Now I'm gonna say, um, please improve the overall look and feel of this page. Uh, also add a night mode toggle. All right, so with all this, you'll see that I'm able to generate things quite quickly and I'm also able to have it interact with other pages, functions, and components. Um, and that is what I think is the most appealing of Create at this point in time. Now, again, if you are a developer, you can still take the code, put it into something like Cursor, and have it do what you want it to do with more granular control. But essentially, you don't need to um, with this, okay? So you can see here, it's applied the new style guide, and it's also got a, a, a night mode, right? So let's do this again. And then let's say AI on the rise. Get prediction. Again, I probably should have added that progress loader so I can see how long it's taking <laughs> right before um, the results are output. But I'm gonna let this finish and then I'm gonna go back to the other pages and functions so we can sort of tie it all together. Um, so you can see what has actually happened here uh, throughout everything. All right, cool. So we've got this, all right? Now, one thing I might add to this actually uh, that might be useful is um, add an option to export as PDF using, you see here? Perfect, right? Um, essentially a, a function that allows me to do PDF generation um, quickly and easily. Uh, also add the ability to share the results uh, to social media uh, via buttons. Okay. So we're going to do its thing and we'll see how that looks. So while we're waiting for this to load, uh, one thing that is good is that you can actually move in and out whilst pages are loading. So you don't have to sit there and wait. So you can't actually work on other things at the same time, right? But you can see with all this that I'm creating these pages and they can essentially interact with one another, right? You just need to give it context. So you don't have to necessarily use the forward slash all the time. You could just say, um, you know, do this from ROI dashboard and create will know that you're talking about this ROI dashboard page that's already on your canvas. Um, Another really cool thing um, about Crate is that when you are actually in build mode, right? Say sometimes you generate a, you generate something, but you only want to regenerate certain aspects of what is generated, not the entire thing, um, which is what we often see at the moment with a lot of AI tools. So with this, for example, um, so let's see what we can do. Uh, okay, so say key metrics. You'll notice that there is an option or a new pop-up that comes up here. Uh, so let's say, hmm, 
what can I say? Um, please um, add a new metric to this that's relevant to a CFO. Few metrics to this that's relevant to a CFO. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. So it's only regenerating that particular div. And it's going to fix, well, essentially all of the other things that I like, it is not going to mess up. It's going to keep those things fixed and in place because that's one of my like annoyances with a lot of tools at the moment is that it's like regenerating the entire page when you're just wanting to fix one particular thing. Um, again, in tools like Cursor, uh, of course, you do have more granular control and you can just, you know, fix certain line items, uh, etc. But for people who are more uh, visually inclined, um, this might work a lot better. OK, so, yeah, we've got the components, we've got the pages, we've got them all kind of uh, talking to one another. And I think that might be uh, enough to share with you for today around create and why I think it is a game changer and they are moving in the right direction in terms of being able to help users create applications that are stitched together more seamlessly than what might be out in the market now. Now, this this whole ecosystem is, uh, there's a lot of competition right now. There are a lot of tools out there. And, you know, there is no clear industry leader yet. But I think the great thing about a lot of these LLMs, these AI systems, is that they all are naturally niching, okay? Even though they have a lot of large data sets that they're working with, they are all niching because of the people who are using it. So at the moment, you'll see that Claude, you know, appeals very much to developers. ChatGPT is for more general users. Uh, Gemini, I personally use it mostly for uh, writing articles because I feel like their articles sound less AI-like, right? Um, and then we got perplexity, which I personally use mostly for research. Now, you can do all those things in one, but you'll notice if you start using all of them, you have different options. Um, I think that's also something that is cool about Create uh, in the sense that you can actually change the models that you even work with. So you see how in the upper right, it's it's got Anthropic here. You can actually switch this so that you're using other uh, LLMs. So you can actually see the variations um, between an Anthropic uh, generation or a ChatGPT-based generation, um, etc. And I think that's a, a, a real selling point uh, for Create. So with that, you know, today is the day when uh, Create actually launched this chat feature here on the left uh, for you to be able to stitch things together, uh, like I have shown. And I hope you've got some uh, some benefit from watching this. And if you have any questions, feel free to, to ask away and, you know, enjoy the process of creating with these new AI tools. Um, and if you're again, if you're looking to check out Create, uh, you can go to create.xyz. Um, I think actually, if you if you want to help a brother out, you can actually also use uh, that referral URL and uh, you help me out, too. So, yeah, with that, again, if you have any questions, let me know. Check out Create. Highly recommend it. One to watch even though they're a bit under the radar at the moment. And all the best. Enjoy your creations.